business. It's Design Uncut with another episode of Designer Wow to How. I'm your host, Medanus Media CEO, Veronica Miller. And today we're talking media rooms and bars. We're all kind of, it seems like we're always talking bars, right, Katie? But uh, that, are, that are smarter. They're smarter than most of us put together. So yeah, um, Katie, what's, what's going on in your end of the world? You know, it's, uh, well, uh, you know, bars and media rooms and, and everything in between and everything on, on the other side. But today, yes, we are, we are focusing on some really cool installations projects with, uh, with, uh, designer and integrators, uh, designer and integrator working together. Sorry, it's early. This is why we're going to this early, right? Ah, all right. Um, we've got a great overview of a couple of projects here that Sharon Sherman and Rick Trover have worked on over the years. They're going to take us through some of the, the project scope and then dive right into uh, how they made it happen. It's really cool stuff. It's not, it's a little bit different conversation today than we've done in the past where we focus on a, sort of the larger scale. This one, this one we're focusing in is going to be a good time. So without further ado, I'd love to introduce Sharon Sherman. Ma'am, how are you? I am so very well, thank you. How are you? Uh, we're here in the Northeast. Actually, Rick and I are both in the Northeast. We're in Northern New Jersey. It's actually a beautiful day today. It got a little chilly today, but um, hopefully the oak pollen has gone and I will not be sneezy through all of this because we've had a lot of oak pollen here and no rain. So it's very dry here in Northern New Jersey. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Sharon, tell us a little bit about uh, your, your company, your background, and uh, Rick, then we'll switch over to you and then we'll dive into projects. Absolutely. So my name is Sharon Sherman and I own Time and Place Design. We are a luxury kitchen and bath remodeling firm. We are creating timeless luxury for kitchen, bath, and home. And I've been doing that for many, many years. Uh, here in the tri-state area and, you know, and abroad, actually, I've been lucky to work in, uh, in several different, uh, several different areas. And uh, most of my projects that involve integration and tech and so on and so forth, um, I turn to Rick Trover and uh, we have worked on projects for many, many years together. And he's a great collaborator. He's a great integrator. And uh, we've been very successful. So I'm very happy to call my friend. He's worked in my house. And uh, he's worked in a good portion of my clients' homes as well. So that is who I am. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for joining us today. Rick, uh, likewise, introduce yourself. Give us a little bit of background about uh, yourself, your company, and uh, what, you, what know, you My do. name is Rick Chover. I have an integration company called uh, Interchange Technologies. We've been, been around about 30 years. Uh, Sharon was part of it uh, uh, on the very beginning. Uh, with uh, with many different facets of her talents and uh, and collaborations uh, as well. Uh, so you know, Sharon is the uh, she's the gears that put a lot of the stuff together. And uh, in between all that, she allows me to to work with um, with her clients in order to bring the the, the tech side uh, to things. Uh, and then as as time went on and morphed, uh, she morphed with it. Uh, and then uh, kept me on as part of her team to be able to uh, <clears throat> offer a broader scope of what she does for her clients. Um, where instead of bringing somebody in from the uh, from the outside, uh, you know that she you know wouldn't uh, maybe know what they're going to do, we can usually anticipate each other's moves and uh, and understand what each other wants in their in their goal you know what what foot to put down first basically yeah yeah see and i thought that, that was one of the things that was most compelling to me when we first got to got to meet you guys which just a week or so ago but my what we've learned in, in that short amount of time so you guys have extensive history and as as we'll we'll guide you through the conversation here in a bit but you know it obviously things don't always go as smoothly as as planned and you found a way to work through those things and and let everyone you know let each of you and the other professionals uh in the room kind of find their lane stay in their lane but also contribute to to the the greater good so to speak the, the overall result and i think that's that's really cool and what we want to dive into a bit here today so veronica you know i know this is this, this one has, has been an interesting conversation as we were going through the background i mean there's there's 30 years of history here and and technology has evolved quite a bit in that amount of time i know from my side of my side of the fence you know on the design side same thing right i mean this is quite a bit of quite a bit of evolution over that time frame and what i what i love uh, hearing uh, hearing sharing yeah. saying what Am I, can you hear me? Yep. 
Yeah. Oh, good. Phew. <laughs> in other words, you got the integrators in the room. You want the tech to work, right? And my tech never works. Let me just assure you of that. So, Jaron, you know, right out of the gate, you said uh, you integrate, you use technology a lot in your projects. Not something one hears from a whole lot of designers. And yet your your focus, I mean, you're you're a true alphabet soup, number one. Your your ASID, your NCIDQ, your CID, your CKD. Yes. <laughs> Rock on. So do you have time for projects or are you just doing the work, right? I'm doing a lot of CEUs. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, what I what I think is is, is important, um, the majority of the rooms that I work in, right, kitchens are, are hubs of the home. So technology is a natural extension into a kitchen, whether it's having a television or whether it's having um, the ability to have Wi-Fi. And now in this crazy new normal that we have, right, people are working out of their kitchens, kids are doing homework in their kitchens. It's just been a natural place to be. And then with bathrooms, you know, as the bathroom technology has come up, you can control showers from your iPhone while you're still in bed. And, you know, you hop in the shower and the water is the temperature and the color that you want it to be. Um, and as more spas have come into vogue, especially at home with spacations, um, spot staycations, I guess you would say, you know, that's taken on a whole new, um, a whole new level. And then people, you know, are looking for more space, right? So we do a lot of larger projects, especially where there's exterior things that are being done. So pools and cabanas and, and working outside. Um, and then people come inside. So now they've enjoyed all the outdoor area. They're coming into their home and it's like, well, where do we go? So we're really creating these lower level living environments. Um, how about that? L yeah, I like the lower I level, and they're kind of not when you get done with them. Then they're kind of upper level living environments, if you ask me. But I, I got to ask you if, you, if you back up a little bit into, into your story as a designer, did tech always come naturally or was that something? Because, I mean, it's a conversation we have all the time, right? Where, where there's a lot of creative folks out there, and I love them, and that are going, I just don't want to deal with that. I want somebody else to deal it. I'm of the mindset that, you can never give up control over your over your process and your project. So you have to know what you don't know. And you have to bring in a good uh, tech team to help you do that. But did you ever, did you have to overcome a threshold of saying, I don't want to deal with that stuff? Or were you always proactive around technology? No, you know, if you're going to, to design for someone, there's two important things to remember. It's all about the client experience, number one. So if you don't know something and you're not going to offer it to your client because you don't know something, then you're really doing a disservice to your client, right? So I think that's a super important, uh, super important concept. The other thing is a lot of designers are afraid to be collaborative because there's an ego-driven uh, center that doesn't want to let control of things go. I am totally control centered, believe me. Um, but like, you know, my Netflix goes out and I'm calling my son in Florida, asking him how to get it back on again. Right. So, I mean, you know, for technology is not, is really not because I have an engineering son, you know, it's really not my thing. So even here in my own home, I said, Rick, I want to be able to do this, 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 and this, but talk to me like I'm a third grader. Cause actually a third grader is probably more tech savvy than I am. So it's gotta be something that I am, I can easily control. My clients are a whole different story. You know, they are totally into the tech. They totally know how to control things, what they want it to do. And that's where I really count on Rick. So that's the collaborative aspect. And that's one of the reasons that Rick and I have been successful because both of us put our ego aside. We totally understand it is all driven by the client experience. We are a concierge level design firm and everybody that is part of our team. And Rick used that word a couple of times. You know, I always say my contractors all sign an agreement that they're going to play nice in the sandbox. Right. Everybody has to work to make sure that the job moves forward. If we come to a stumbling block, we overcome it and we continue to move on so that we're not at a standstill pointing fingers. And that, I think, is one of the things that has worked for me. So I'm happy to say I don't know, but let me get Rick because he knows. It. And that's, but that's what it's all about. That's what's having a collaborative. It's all about, we're having a collaborative right now. Right. And, um, and it's to the benefit of anybody who's seeing this. And it's actually to the benefit of each other because we're all learning something from it. We really are. I'm, I'm not normally I interject questions, but I'm just kind of going, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> I, I think this is, this is sort of the, the, the perfect, concept in and around a designer and tech collaboration right and yeah. we all know how it goes when you're out in the in the middle of something and something goes wrong it's hard for not the egos not to to 
blow out of proportion or to, for there to be friction. How, how do you guys, and I, I know we're going to get into this in a little bit, a little bit more, <laughs> but how do you guys diffuse? How do you guys, um, how do you do what you just said? Uh, you know, how do you, how do you walk that line? You begin to understand how the other person uh, thinks and what drives them. You know, I mean, with uh, Sharon, she's technical. She's exact in what she does. And uh, as guys would be, sometimes we're not. Uh, so she drives me, you know, she'll drive me to the, up to the, uh, right, say, right to the garage. But um, basically, <laughs> I have to, she has to, I understand what her expectations are. And she knows where where the where the limits lie so and it's you know it's a you can't work with every designer the same because every designer it has a different take on their on their on their design concept how much they'll allow you to go in or not um in you know many of the things that uh things that she we enjoy is that you know if she has a problem down the road because he's you know technology lasts beyond the design and commissioning. It's, uh, you know, when the guy wants to listen to Pandora later on or watch a TV channel later on three years down the road. Um, and I need to, you know, she need, sometimes they'll call her and say, what do I do? She says, call Rick because he's the guy who put it in and I'll field the call and deal with it on a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday. Um, these are things that you need to keep open because we are, you know, uh, we are working when everybody else is enjoying the home that has been designed and built. So, uh, you know, because part of the design is the uh, the way I look at it. The part of design is a living space, and the um, and the audio and video is the is the living, breathing part of it. So that's the part that um, that's the part that's very important to be able to back up. You can't run away. You know, and, she knows and, I own what I do. She owns what she does. So that works. I know that's the, right. the secret. And and we're getting ready to, to yeah. see some of those projects. And, uh, you know, I think it's important for, for the, the consumer just wants it to look good and work, right? Bottom mm -hmm. line. So I think that's that's kind of a big part of the conversation. How do we make it look good and work so you can just sit down or enjoy your bar and have all the things without without having to call your son in Florida, really? <laughs> I wish I had a son in Florida because I don't, I, you know, I sit there and go, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's pretty common, you know, and in, in, in more more and more. I mean, you know, part of the family becomes uh, tech support tier one um, and an integrator is, is there on, on standby. And depending on who the integrator is that you work with, the level of service and support that comes after the installation, you know, those those offerings will vary. And it is it's a really important part of the conversation. Not anything we're touching on here today, but, you know, definitely highlighted as part of the success of these two. So worth, worth noting for future for future discussions. So, shall we dive right in, boys and girls? Yay, let's boy, boy and girl, boy and girl. Yes, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Sharon, I right, let's let's kind of let's as I say on my podcast world, let's swing the mic over to you. Um, navigate us through these projects, if if you will, um, and and we're gonna do a little bit of eye candy up front, and then uh, but you also have the drawing. So, um, take us take us away here, if you would. Um, yeah. What what are we looking at? This is eye candy. Now, this is the <laughs> cute. This was a believe this or not. This was a um, two thousand square foot basement, and um, it was literally the place that the kids played hockey. It was the place where there was, you know, you see the balance beam bar there. Um, this client, there's a nanny. There's two working parents. There's kids. Um, the wife uh, also. She's a professional, but she rescues pets. She rescues dogs. So they had this big space downstairs. Um, Rick had worked, I, I believe worked outside. Um, they had this cabana, this pool, and then all of a sudden they realized they were moving inside and they're like, oh my God, where are we going to put everybody? They had a large extended family. They're in the, they're, they're in a, a sports related business. Let's just say that. And, um, so they called and they said, what can we do down here? I'm like, well, what do you want? And they said, well, we, we want to be able to have our family down here. We want to entertain. We want to have business things. We want to have a gym. We want to have a place for the kids. We want to have a walk-in wine cellar. We want to create kind of a cabaret, wine bar, sports bar, speakeasy. And I said, oh, 
okay. So um, what we did is we created this space. So this is the, the floor plan for this basement area. Um, there is additional space, which really is irrelevant to our talk today, but there was a huge storage area that was created. Um, so as you're looking at the plan, the upper right-hand side uh, became the exercise or gym area. So that's their at-home gym. And I know Rick did um, some TVs in there and some speakers and things. And then as you start to move left, that became a soft seating area where originally we were going to have multiple screens. And then Rick had the brilliant idea of being able to have one screen that would split into four. And he has to explain that. Um, and then as you moved farther left, that became the bar area area. And um, obviously, it, it accommodates many seaters and consumers. Uh, there's uh, speakers in there, there was lighting in there. And um, opposite that bar, we had high top tables, which can be put together for communal wine tasting, or it can stay separate as you would have in a sports bar or in a wine bar. And then just uh, part of that wine bar was then a large, beautiful walk-in wine cellar. As you move around the room, I'm going counterclockwise, obviously, we came to an area that we created for the kids. So they could have a place to have their food, have drinks down there, to stay out of the bar area. There was a raised counter that they could sit and have snacks. Just below that became the arts and crafts gaming room. And, uh, you know, Rick set that up. We got these crazy beanbag chairs that they could uh, change the, uh, the layout of so they can be gaming in there. And then you move back to the right, and that is the family movie night area. And it was really important for the clients that everybody could be downstairs at the same time, but have different areas that they could be active, active in. So the kids could be gaming, the parents could be watching sports, somebody could be watching a movie. So it was really an open floor plan that needed to have designated locations. And that was the story of this little project, this big project. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, and that's a, an up close and personal view of what the bar actually looked like. So, you know, there's a front and back bar, there's a dishwasher, drawers, there's wine coolers, there's beverage centers, there's a sink, there's integrated lighting. And then Rick needed to figure out how to get a TV in there with speakers, which I think he did rather well. Um, and behind that bar, you would walk into the wine cellar. Yes, you would, because wine cellar. So here's, now we finally get a wow. We know we tricked wow. everybody. Wow. We, we, uh, but, but it's kind of from, from before to wow to how. So we're just going to rename this program. But this looks amazing. This looks yeah. really, really great. So tell us about what's, what's what we're seeing here. So from my perspective, um, you're seeing the high top tables, which I said we can move around and connect those together so they can be communal tables for wine tastings. You can see the beautiful walk-in wine cellar on the left and then a pretty extensive bar. Um, you know, and my client has some really funky tastes, which I, I really totally um, reveled in for this. So um, we were able to have, you know, different colored seating. We did some great custom lighting. She had wonderful wall coverings um, in, in the background there. You can kind of see the TV. And one of the nice things about having the large screen was that we were able to put up these funky handmade glass art pieces. And they have some really interesting art and some photography down here. So that played a big uh, part in it. But because there are still kids and there are still dogs, we use this really awesome flooring from Carlisle uh, Wood Flooring. It's actually a cork-backed vinyl, which is antimicrobial and waterproof and pet-proof and kid-proof and all other thing-proof. Um, and then we did some really, I think, really nice millwork and had some really beautiful finishings. My, my countertop fabricator did a fabulous job on that waterfall mitered edge for the what kind, of, what kind of material is that on the car? I was gonna say, what is that? Is a quartzite. Um, yeah. uh, the generic term for it is brown fantasy. I believe Nazarene is much more exotic, so that's the yeah. name he goes by. I really like it. Uh, the wallpaper, it's a metallic cork. I had a faux painted metallic ceiling put up where the light fixture is. And you can see the TV and you can see all the integrated lighting. Rick did, um, I believe he did lighting controls in there, Rick. Yeah, but control for lighting control. Yeah, you, control could, uh, you could uh, work the scene with a yeah. push. So Rick would have to tell you about that. I just know it worked really well. So this is the 
from the kids, uh, the kids kind of area where, um, you know, she didn't, so the client didn't want to have to be bringing things upstairs and downstairs. So everything they need to entertain on that lower level is in that lower level. Uh, the only thing they would bring down is food, but there's a, a beverage center that you can see there, all the glasses, all the plates, all the things that they need are right there. And then that's looking into the kids area, which is where we got this, you know, funky carpet and brightly colored, these love sacks. And uh, that's where Rick put in the um, the TV for their gaming. And then we repurposed, and you kind of see it in the background there, there was a jog in the wall. And um, we repurposed that into a barn door so that all of the game components and everything that they need, the controllers are all hidden back there in a nice way. Because, you know, children don't close doors. So the barn door they think is fun. So they actually do use it. Smart. <laughs> we, the world needs way more barn. Do we also have barn doors for husbands? I'm just asking for a friend. I'm just wondering because she wants one, one surrounding him like the whole time. <laughs> I'm not even going to touch that. So um, <laughs> intelligent. We um, we also used a glass barn door to be to close off the exercise room because we didn't want the exercise room to really lose the light that we did have. This is a high ceiling in here, right? So we do have windows uh, from the basement. So we actually put diffused glass in there and the door so that you'd still have a little bit of light that would come through when they closed those doors. But then this is the family um, family movie night, right? Friday night movie light night. And um, here again, we we built out a section in the walls that we could accommodate this, uh, this little gas fireplace, which is beautiful. And we covered the lolly columns. Um, I have an amazing contractor who can literally build whatever I can envision. And um, he covered these lolly columns quite well. And then Rick was able to install yet another system in here with, um, with speakers and this lovely television. I found another little nook and cranny where I could put in a little, um, like a window seat, even though there's no window. And um, we were able to put so the client's friend as a really well-known artist. So we incorporated some of her art into this space. And it's just a big, comfortable, oversized sectional with this really funky, um, you know, piece of furniture that serves as a buffer between the two spaces. Again, more space, another place to put down food and things when they're entertaining. Super cool, super cool. Okay, so Rick, pick us, pick up here and uh, and talk to us about about tech. Obviously, we see the TV. I think I see some speakers there, but uh, take us take us down a few levels here. What you what you do to make this room happen? Well, you wanted to have a a, a nice surround sound system there. I mean, that's uh, their their comfortable seating uh, Friday evening. Uh, let's watch a movie night, and you know, see. So but you also want to make it a space that when they're having a larger party and so forth that the audio can all mix to all together. So that, you know, the audio from that, uh, from that system melds with all the rest of the audio within the, uh, within the space. So it can be segregated or joined all together. And it's done very simply. Control 4 does a, uh, you know, a system we used as a system where you can join rooms together in audio, make it all function. Uh, we also did a video matrix that, uh, uh, instead of uh, utilizing, you know, when they, again, when they have a large uh, uh, a large party and you want one game to be in sync um, so that, you know, the game is happening at the same time at all the screens, <clears throat> you want to be able to have a, a video matrix that shares your, um, your video real time rather than <clears throat> have the goal being made over here and over there two seconds later. <laughs> or thereby, uh, you know, keeping the um, keeping the bets to a minimum. But see, and I, I want to pause you there for just a second. It just <clears throat> so this is a this is a, a nerdy, techy, little geeky thing. But but guys and gals, this is actually really cool and really important. And you've experienced the opposite of this a million times, and it no doubt has struck a nerve when you're walking through like a, a, a <clears throat> commercial space where there's multiple TVs playing the same content. And, and there's a lag between them and you, and, and you get the twitch because you can't quite, your brain can't process what's going on, but nothing is in, is in sync. What Rick is talking about with that video matrix eliminates all of that. And it makes sure that the content is, is absolutely time synced across all of those displays. So you don't get that twitch and it does, you don't have that sort of brain uh, difficulty trying to process. It's just a much more enjoyable experience. So kind of one of those things and we'll, we'll touch at the end of this is some of uh, Rick's, Rick's tri tricks and, and tips. 
this is one of the things is really listen in when the clients are talking about the type of video experience that they want. And if there's a multiple screen conversation or like a sports bar type of environment they're looking to, to introduce, just remember this video matrix conversation and then work with your integrator to, to talk through whether that's a possibility or not. Sorry, Rick, sidebar. <laughs> it's a good sidebar though. Does it work? Is, does the sound do the same thing? Because I can just now think that if there's a little lag in the sound moving from one space and the other, especially in an open floor plan like that, how do you structure that to make sure that the sound doesn't have lag? Because it's because it's one source, uh, and that's a good question, because many times if you run a surround sound system alongside regular audio, you'll have a, a latency between them. So when, when that uh, choice is made to have everything on the same uh, the same picture, you drive it to stereo so that you don't have surround and stereo at the same time. It's just a trick of when you select it, you, you know, you have a, a mode for party and a mode for movies. <clears throat> and so it knows one thing over the other. And we have run in, you know, obviously with sound bars and things like that, the, uh, the industry has done that on a regular basis, driving people crazy, uh, thinking that they're, uh, <clears throat> they're in another dimension. Um, so you try to, <clears throat> you try to uh, think ahead with that. Um, so, you know, they, when and when they wanted to do something like this, you wanted to have something that had a, a speaker system that's in place. You see smaller speakers there and they all sound nice, but there's no bottom end. What you can't see here is the subwoofers and things that are built into the background to give the background audio so that when Sagal comes out with a, a submachine gun it goes boom 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 or if you want to play some you want to play some rap <clears throat> you got some bass um <clears throat> again you don't see any equipment in any of this sharon designed uh <clears throat> with our collaboration and the village collaboration a closet with a rack uh because as you can see this whole built this most of this basement is built out uh so we put a rack in that has all this stuff uh equipment placed in one place and it's manageable it's fixable uh, if something's wrong in in a moment, you can you can go to the right place and fix it, um, which is a very very important thing. It's longevity, um, and also uh, it makes it much more much neater solution instead of having wires and cabinets and and so forth, which is something that uh, Sharon and I have learned over the many many years of doing work together. That you know the original way was putting it into a cabinet under a TV. <clears throat> and then, then you had a, a, a rat's nest of of wires and things, and people yeah. do they have to understand that that's necessary, but you want to hide it. Yeah. If there's a nook and cranny, we try to create a space that Rick can put his components and things but, into. But the, and the rack is a huge conversation, right? Yeah. I know, Katie, yeah. you have the horror story on, on that one, which is half a garage <laughs> size. Now, Florence, if you can back up uh, just one more second. Um, so that's that you're fine. Um, so, so a question I had in terms of your collaboration, again, Sharon and Brick, uh, in design, oftentimes form follows function, right? Uh, not in mine. I used to always flip it the other way around because I didn't care. <laughs> but, uh, but how does it work with design and technology between you two guys when you're thinking about rack space, but also when you're thinking about uh, positioning of AV components, does does Rick's input actually impact or inform the design you're going to move forward with? Or do you create the, the design? You've got your vision for the design and then Rick has to make it work within those parameters. Or where's the, where's the line there? I have a real life scenario that will explain just that. So Rick uh, invited me into a project. Actually, he started with my contractor. And then my contractor said to me, you need to get involved in this. I'm like, why? He goes, okay, there's an interior designer, there's Rick, and there's me. And somebody needs to be the pivot point for all of us. And I'm like, gee, thanks. So I came in and it's a huge basement, right? And the interior designer has a pretty good idea of what he wants to see in the space, but he's not so technically adept at being able to create the drawings. So I actually have taken a 30 year step back in my career and I'm functioning as a design assistant and drafts person for this, but it's become important because, you know, the designer had an idea of how they wanted a wall to look and Rick needed to be able to put a number of screens on a wall. This is a, it's, it's a professional sports coach in our area. So that 
that kind of gives you an idea. So we started out with six screens and then the designer had picked to this little fireplace, not different you know, I, in concept from what you just saw, but on a much larger scale. And then he, you know, there is a projector and then there's gonna be a bar and then there are all of these other rooms. So we started to go through this and Rick's like, projector's not gonna work there. And oh, by the way, they don't want six screens, they want nine. So, you know, all of a sudden the designer's like, wow, what are we gonna do? So I said, okay, let's everybody calm down. Everybody tells me, tell me what you need and I'll try to figure it out, right? So I get together with, with Randy. He's my contractor, world's greatest contractor. Um, I got together with him and I'm like, what can we do? All right, Rick, tell me the size of what you need. And Randy's like, well, maybe you can do something in here. I get on a Zoom call with the interior designer. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? Okay, we can move this to the other side. All right, Rick, you can have your nine screens on that wall. Where am I gonna put this Darn projector. Okay, I can build this soffit out. Rick, you can recess it in there. You need 20 inch. Perfect. I'll have that there. How am I going to tie the coffer ceiling that the designer wants into this? Ooh, Randy, yes, that'll work. I've got it. So all of these things slowly but surely started to come together. Then I met with the designer and said, how are we going to build this wall? Here's what I need. You've got clearances. You've got this. We collaborated on that. I designed with him literally live. And we created the wall that works for him. Rick gets to put his um, components where he wants them to go. Randy knows what he has to build and I'll get to supply four cabinets for the bar. So that's- <laughs> Sharon, you're the missing link. Sharon, you are the Sharon's answer the to every question we have had since we started Design Uncut. Oh, right, Katie? We need a Sharon. Yeah. But, I am willing, but I am willing to take that position because yeah. it's Rick, and it's Randy, right? And there are two people that are extremely important to my business and the success of my business. And I want them to be successful in this project. And, um, you know, I can draft. I, I know there's a lot of designers like, I don't want to learn to draft. I don't know how to do it. If I had to try to send this to somebody else, and I work with virtual assistants, if I had to try to send this now to another person, it just wouldn't work. So, and I am getting paid for my time. Believe me, I'm not doing this for free. But, um, you know, but it is the way that everything will be able to come together because I can I can go up to the job site and I can work on the construction perspective with my contractor and bring the audio that and visual uh, components that Rick needs. And I can also speak the interior design speak. So it's it's just a variety of 40 years of experience, you know, that I can bring all this together. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. So yeah, next next project was you know time to lie in. So oh, wow. Uh, yeah. What this is this is a smaller scale version of of the the previous basement that we had. So on the left, that is an area a recess that you know just collected a whole lot of stuff. There's a sump pump back there. There's a big opening in the wall. Um, in the center is the view when you came down the stairs to a red brick fireplace that had a high raised um, hearth. And then uh, to the right, you can see there's a door that leads into a laundry room. And then where that treadmill is, you walk around the corner and there was an unused space that was back there. So the request for this was again, to be able to take the client uh, wanted to be able to have an extension of their home so they can have Sunday afternoon, you know, the everybody over to watch football. They can have, you know, March Madness. They can have all the other things that want to go on. This is the existing space. So you can see where you come down the stairs. She's also an avid wine connoisseur. So goes to Napa, makes her own wine. And, you know, you hear homemade wine and people go, Ooh. her homemade wine is unbelievably delicious. And my husband is a wine snob and even he liked it. So uh, needed to figure out a way to create an office for her. She is um, uh, an executive with a television um, uh, company channel and she runs a lot of things from home. She She's the one who has her finger on the button of what's going on and is really involved with the legal things that you can and cannot do. So lower left-hand corner, we created an office for her there. Um, there will be a background. This job is in progress, so I, I don't have finished shots of it, but you know, we needed an area that she could have her components that she could have everything work seamlessly. And then when she has Zoom calls, she needed a nice background. So we are creating a really beautiful navy blue wall with, with um, shiplap and a comfortable chair for her, plus her, her uh, office equipment. Uh, to Adjacent to that, to the right is a bathroom that, was, that we did. As you walk back out away from that office, back into the room, that large area on the left, that is a laundry room and storage area, you turn right and then she has a bar. Uh, there, which has a large wine area um, and some comfortable seating. 
If you then moved all the way across that room to your right, that is an area that became her exercise area. And then we converted that open useless space into a closet where she can store all of her exercise equipment. And then straight opposite of the bar is a large seating area where um, you know she wants to entertain and have folks down. We did change the furniture arrangement a little bit because Rick, Rick, uh, really <laughs> <wanted to. laughs> Rick. <laughs> have the television in a different location. So I redesigned the furniture layout to accommodate Rick's television requests and his speaker requests. And, um, and it, that's all starting to come together. So, um, yeah, so he, it was, Rick was charged with, once again, we've got multiple televisions in multiple areas, integrating her Peloton because she wanted the Peloton to be able to interact with the television screen and the surround sound and all the other things that are down there. And, um, it's turning out to be quite the amazing project. As she says, every time I come downstairs and you put something else in, I squeal with delight. Yes. <laughs> We want. That's what we want. want. And the, the, it's it. kind of nice that you don't have. We will love to invite you back to show us when this thing is completely <laughs> finished because we, we, you know, now I'm excited about, yeah, seeing how it all comes together. But we do have some great in progress shots and some yep. some technical details. So let's talk about those. Yeah. So that's when you come down the stairs, you walk into the seating area where she's, you know, once again, Randy created amazing, uh, you know, lolly column concealment systems for me. Uh, we also use them to get outlets down there. So when you have in motion sofas, I can run the wires for the in motion right into an outlet. So you're not tripping over things for the, you know, the remote controlled um, sofas, which we also have. Um, and then straight ahead, that big, ugly red you know, uh, piece of fireplace is now beautiful stacked stone. We've got some floating shelves, a, an amazing light fixture, which she calls the upside down tree, which that's what she squealed about. And then um, with delight, and then there's a television <laughs> there. I think you probably have a couple more shots that kind of show the rest of the room. That's a, yeah, that's the forward shot to um, the TV. I think there's a sound bar, Rick, that that's really your area, but there's a sound bar and then two recessed speakers. Um, and the interesting thing of this, this was all concrete. So you're all cinder block down here. So we had to um, create chases and passageways and all kinds of things to be able to get these things into the walls because it is a, you know, it is a full, a full sized uh, floor to ceiling basement at a cinder block. And just have a question here from Jennifer Hyman. Is that uh, the support column in the basement? Yes, those are the lolly columns. And yep. um, that's how we then, and in the other previous job as well, um, that's how we conceal them and use them. We use them for wire chases. We use them for all kinds of things. They are handy. What is, a, things. what is a lolly column? A lolly column is a structural component that is put into support levels. So there it's a big steel column that is bolted into the concrete floor and uh, bolted into the floor joists, which are the members that support the second floor of the house or the ceiling roof of the house, whatever. In these cases, it's a, uh, you know, it's uh, the floors, uh, and it, it holds the house up. Got it. Okay. So I don't know, like or tangere. It's the same idea. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so then, this, so then, I guess this is perfect segue. I sorry, I have to say it. This is the technology lily column. Yeah. Huh? See, see what I just did there, Rick. Rick, right? Isn't it? Come on. Come on. That was good. Right? Rick's, this is Rick's oh. rack. Rick's <laughs> rack. Let's talk about Rick's rack for a minute. Rick's yeah. rack. Yes. Behold. Tell us what we're seeing here. You know, so, I mean, you have to put the you have to put the equipment into a spot that is accessible and uh, maintainable. So, uh, basically, we have, you know, you have the surround sound receiver there. It's a battery backup on the bottom to make sure it all works. Cable boxes. Everything is located in one one spot, all your networking and so forth. Um, so, you know, we try to, you try to put this into an unfinished area uh, whenever you can, that it has the ability to open and close. And so you're not, uh, again, you want to be able to manage wires so that you're not uh, creating this mess that you can't work on. You don't want to have something when the cable guy comes in, looks at it and runs away, <clears throat> basically. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, when this is all finished, it'll have uh, filling spaces and, uh, you know, a couple of things to make it look a little more one piece. But you have to get done with all your your setup in order to be able to complete that. Um, in, uh, in the time of uh, COVID, some of this stuff kind of came in in little jerks and spurts. Uh, a lot of the, you know, the Sonos had run out of equipment. You had to go out and 
find it and so forth. And she was a big uh, Sonos user. So I had to make sure that the system was very friendly to her to begin with, and then introduce the control four as the, as the rest of the system to put it together. So she can use this system as control four or Sonos, however she chooses. Uh, you can't see it in the rack, but the user interface is, you know, she didn't have to learn another interface in order to make it work just to, just to work the TVs, which was you know, simple. You know, you just hit the button, watch and go. But uh, I wanted to make it so that she didn't have to relearn how she's been listening to music for the past 10 years. Um, so we, we pick equipment that will do that. So together. And I think that's, yeah. And that's just kind of a, not necessarily a full, a full sidebar here, but just, you know, kind of a little mini sidebar is that's something to listen to and, and directly bring up with your clientele as you're talking about projects is how do you currently listen to music? Are there any particular platforms? Is there, are there any brands that, that you are already familiar with? And I think just starting with that, that question and making those notes and handing that off to your integration partner, uh, that, that can really make or break the, the efficiency and the effectivity of the starting point of the project in this one. And Rick had explained this to us early on. Sonos was brought up early and that, that was, that was familiar to her. And she just wanted to make sure that at least let's just make it familiar. And he was able to build the system around that and yet keep it very simple, but yet robust. And that, you know, I think that's kind of the, the lesson learned here for, for that one. So, nope. Okay. TV on a mount, on a moving mount. Yeah, so this so is literally, yeah. you can swivel, and, and people are always asking, you know, how can I see one TV from two spaces? So, you know, she wanted to be able to articulate the television so it, she could use it when she's exercising, or it can swivel back because there is seating at the bar so that she wanted to be able to have, you know, viewing at the bar and have Rick sync everything to work everything together. And then, you know, we needed to create some chases because we needed wires and we needed some other things so that you can catch the bar there. Uh, with her wine, her wine storage. And um, so right now this would be directed toward the exercise area. And then if she were having a party and wanted to be able to have it directed back to the seating area, of the bar, she could do that. Okay. Yes, very cool. Okay. Looking, looking good. So we got a little, got a little switch, switcheroo. Um, I know uh, uh, Rick, Rick's sometimes seeing other people we're told. And, uh, <laughs> Tell us, tell us a little bit about this wild and crazy project. Always, and what he happens. always comes back to me, Veronica. You always yeah. come back to me. We all do. Good man. Good man. But uh, he knows he knows where he's got it good. Uh, you know my, bread, my bread's buttered. Yeah. <laughs> Rick, tell us about tell us about what's going on in here. There's so much, and and clearly this is a completely different kind of project. But walk us through this. Well, there's a facet in the industry that uh, that's out there uh, using uh, design homes, and there across the country, there's different facets of how to do a design home. Um, this particular uh, way of doing it is that, I mean, I've been I've been taking care of this this association for the last uh, <clears throat> 15 years. Uh, their uh, company called uh, it's called the Mansion in May. Normally, this this year it was called the Splendor in September because of COVID. So they, they pushed it back a little farther. Uh, and it's an opportunity for an integrator to integrate with designers um, to be able to, uh, this is one room out of 35 rooms that a uh, that uh, this association, the Women's Association of Morristown Memorial Hospital puts together, they create millions of dollars to donate to the, uh, to the hospital. So it's a great, cause and it's done year in year out it's about thirty thousand people that walk through it and it's a tour that you just can't pick and choose where you go it's uh you know it's one room two room three room four room and designers will pick rooms uh and maybe get chosen you have to get chosen to get into the room to do so so uh this particular room is our room that we we did with it with another with another uh designer that i have a relationship with that um you get a room that's basically skimmed and there there's a pretty ugly before photograph that I don't have here but you know we built we built out the uh, the fireplace area uh, that is a um, that's a that's a Sony TV which when you shut it off retracts up into the uh, into the wood above those are kept speakers that uh, that the manufacturer supplied as well um, it all runs with Control four to the right. There's a 
There's a bar, of course, because you have to have a bar that pops up using Nexus lifts. Um, to the left of that is a is a a, a, a low high uh, desk raising desk that we put in. You know, actually worked out for COVID and using Lutron's shades. So at the end, <clears throat> the presentation is push one button, the lights dim, the shades drop, the TV goes down, and so forth. And then of course your rack of equipment with your um, with your controls. Those are the uh, to the far left is the cameras of which I supply for the mansion as well. Also the Wi-Fi for the whole mansion, a secure Wi-Fi that they can take money with and so forth. Um, and it actually, you know, it it's a great uh, collaboration between designer and um, and, uh, and and automation uh, technician. Um, a lot of clients don't expect to see something like this in a design home. It's kind of a, a out there type of thing. Is um, the uh, is the home generally speaking? Uh, are the other rooms kind of techy too, or did that just happen to be this particular space? Not, not in the least. Uh, they, they basically would have like a, uh, a Sonos paint, player for music. And textiles. <laughs> yeah, we supplied, we supplied music for outside. Um, uh, you know, or, or uh, Origin supplied ballads that I supplied music for outside for the space. Um, so we, we are the tech guys in the mansion that that take care of that. Um, in here, you see uh, that's a mirror. You know, the mirror that Luda Lemon now owns. Uh, so we went out and bought one of those, stuck it up because it was technology and hiding uh, with the background of the wallpaper to the left is a touch panel that we put a background in, you can, you know, so it isn't, doesn't stand out like an ugly, ugly thing. So you try to put a couple of ideas out there. It was a very small room. We tried to put, you know, interactive stuff around it. Uh, very successful. I've pulled many other clients from it for all different, uh, for all different aspects. Um, I mean, the trick is to be there and demonstrate the whole time. An old friend, an old designer friend of mine said, if you don't show up and hang out there, you're not going to get anywhere. You know, you got to show up. You got to hold those there. things till you're, till you fall over. It's right. So yeah, I, I wonder if yeah. people, if people, what, what the, what the popularity is going to be with those mirrors. I'm of two minds. How are you guys feeling about those? Do you do a lot of them? Rick? Um, I like I I haven't had requests for them. I I basically have clients who have pelotons, you know, um, and have you know weights and have treadmills. I mean, I myself, I you know, I asked for a really nice treadmill, so that's what I got. Um, I don't like to watch myself exercise, so for me, <laughs> that is not um, but I, you know, I look at something and I'm you know, running through Costa Rica. But um, you know, I, I think the other side of this that's that's important to understand. You know, I don't profit from Rick's work, right? So, um, and Rick's not taking money from me. So, all of these things then become. Um, more affordable, I believe, to the client. I, I think a lot of times designers are like, well, if you're going to put that in, you know, I want 20%. So, you know, you take a, a room that would maybe has, you know, $70,000 worth of automation in it. And that room is now suddenly $85,000 worth of automation. And for sometimes you'll find clients who will say, I don't think I want to spend that, you know? So I, I, that's just, and that's up to each and every individual designer. That's just how Rick and I work. You know, again, for me, it's the collaboration and it is the experience that the client's going to have. And when they're happy, they're going to refer both of us. And, you know, the majority of my business comes from referrals. So I think that's what's also really, really important to remember. And people will see this, you know, maybe one person is going to want the mirror. Maybe one person's going to want the stand up desk. Maybe somebody else thinks that the mirror going up and down is really cool. And probably everybody wants the bar. So I think that's, you know, that's the, um, that's the of what you get from these spaces. <laughs> no, oh, and you guys just touched on something. We so we have got to have this conversation on another day, which is the the pricing conversation. It comes up so frequently, and there are many different ways to 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 slice that. Um, I'm so glad that you mentioned it here. We will, guys, gals, we will revisit that conversation uh, in mass and probably more than just one show. So, uh, mark my words, we'll come back to that. All right, 
I, so, I and, and to prove that this. you guys do not only work in basements, we wanted to, <laughs> to add this, this cool little bathroom. First of all, I love nothing more than having a freestanding tub inside a kind of an alcove space. That looks really cool. And now people are going to say, yeah, but how do you clean it? I don't care. I really love the look. I like that there's a, 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 a an interesting shape in that space. So, so well done there. But Rick put a TV into a wet room there. So let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Siora has a, they have a uh, waterproof television set that we can uh, utilize in our space. It's uh, backed up with some audio. You see a little speaker in the ceiling. Uh, there's a couple of them, but there's a, uh, you know, it's great. I mean, these uh, you can uh, you can watch anything you want over it. It's a has an IR repeater in it that we can locate the equipment in another location. Um, great place to uh, have a uh, have a soak. And watch a movie for a little while, or watch, uh, you know, HGTV. Um, but it's a, uh, it was a, it's a cool concept. Um, it works great. Uh, it gives you something to do while you're hanging out. <laughs> is that a steam shower yeah. too? It, it is not. So this, this, so I will say this. It looks like it's a very tiny little TV in a very big space, and it's unfortunately the the photography is not all that it should be. Um, it's a much larger television than it actually appears to be, but this is not a really big bathroom. And one of the reasons that we created this space the way we did um, is because they wanted a, a big soaking tub and they wanted a big shower and they wanted a really nice vanity and they didn't have enough room to fit it all in one room. So that was, uh, you know, by magic of stealing a little closet space and rebuilding it somewhere else, um, you know, we were able to create this. And then my client's like, you know, we just came back from this great trip and they had a TV above the tub. We want that. And I said, oh, great. So I've now put the tub inside a shower room, which is going to be wet all the time. So I quickly said, Rick, help. And um, <laughs> that was when Rick came in and said, I can do that. And I said, that's awesome. So that's what he did. So it, it, it is not a steam shower. It is a main rain shower head, uh, which you see above. And then mm -hmm. there's an adjustable handheld shower that's on a bar at the end. The controls relocated uh, as you walked into the room so that you didn't have to walk all the way into this room to be able to turn on the water and get soaked. You can control it before you set foot into the space. The filler is obviously coming out of the, out of the wall. And, um, you know, tubs are meant to get wet. It's not like you turn the shower on and they get wet and now you have to quickly clean them. I mean, it's just the same as if you turn the shower on and the walls get wet. So you might squeegee it off, but, you know, certainly the tub's not adversely affected by the water. Um, the tricky part is being able to get the linear drain in and pitch the floor so that the tub sits level. So when you fill it, the water's not on an angle. And that, again, I will refer back to my to my contractor. But Rick did a great job here. It looks beautiful. Okay. I, I actually like the whole thing very much. So, yeah. uh, as we're as we're wrapping up, because we're we're at the top of the hour here, Rick and and Sharon both help us. Uh, what what are sort of your your most important tips on? And this is the big focus here: really strong collaboration between designer and all contractors, but particularly the integrator. You have to set your ego aside, right? You have to be able to, like my design cannot trump the AV. The AV cannot trump the design. They have to, <laughs> pardon the fun, integrate. Um, so <laughs> once you have those two professions and those two aspects of the project come together to work seamlessly, just like you want all of your technology to work seamlessly, then you, the design and the technology need to work seamlessly together. And you need to step back and just understand that everybody is there to be a partner, to really create the atmosphere for your client to have the best experience, to create that concierge level service for your client where one thing is not more important than the other. One thing enhances the other. And that is what a successful collaboration is about. Yeah, the, uh, the, earlier, the earlier on in the project, the uh, audio integrator uh, and the designer get together and make a, make a picture for the client is a very, very important part. That way it's, they're not blindsided by the design all of a sudden, oh my God, I got to do audio as well. You, the designer builds a lot of this stuff in. Um, every day of your life, or in many lives anyway, you listen to music or you watch television set, and that's part of the design process. And part of the designer's um, <clears throat> scope 
is to address that on the way in. And if the uh, if the client has has um, you know wants to have a complete design concept, the designer realizes that. And then, I mean, when Sh when Sharon designs a concept, you know, because of our experience working out, she already designs a lot of this stuff into her presentation on the way in. Uh, uh, she plants seeds along the way. This is where a television would go. That's nice. This is where you want to hide your equipment and other projects I've done. And, you know, she introduces this thing in little bits and parts on the way in, kind of paving the way for an audio video integrator to get in rather than being a, a, um, a conflict. You want it to be inclusive in the whole design from the start because that's what you're going to do. You're building a space for the person to live in. So the design is to live in it in the, in the, in the living and breathing part is how are you going to use it? And she's thinking of all these things that are, that are very, very important, which makes more recommendations, which makes more uh, profitability, which makes your business bigger, um, that you're including all the technology of the day, which is huge as you know, if you're not in it, you're not, you're not on it. You know, it's just not going to happen because you're going to be, you know, technology will overrun it. And then you're going to wind up with somebody in there as a designer. You're going to wind up with somebody in there uh, probably messing with you. So you're better off having control of it or having some type of say in it where, you know, you have a, a, a nice collaborative um, solution at the end. And the earlier you start with it, the better. That way the client isn't blindsided by by uh, you know, I want to hang a TV here. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yes, I think the other important part of it too is you know you're looking at really big projects that we've worked on, right? Because that's what's really exciting. You have all these yeah. different areas. But you know, I may do a kitchen and say, "Hey, Rick, I got a client who needs to put a TV on the wall in the kitchen, and I built a closet. Can you put the you know, can you put the uh, the cable box in there?" And he'll do that. You know, so it's not like it's only really big things. And there are many integrators that are like, you know what? I'm not touching the job under $30,000. And, you know, that that leaves a bad taste, you know. So he knows that it's not going to win him the day. But by the same token, there's a lot of other rooms in that house. So you you set up my TV so I can watch my cooking shows and I can, you know, sit and knit and do all this stuff. Wow, we're going to do our backyard. I got to bring Rick back, you know. And I think that's that's smart business. Well, and, and as you know, Sharon, you guys get so much of your business as word of mouth. So you put in that TV into that kitchen and the next guy that walks in to come visit those people does have that 3000 square foot basement. Yeah, and exactly. if there's an integration that's seamless and smooth, it all travels, uh, you know, in, in that way. We all know how that how that deal works. And I think it's really important. For, for designers from speaking from that angle of the business um, to say, you know, you want to be in control of what that project looks and acts like even years down the road when you when you're gone, you know, you have those settings in place for lighting control, shading controls, how the TVs work. It's going to be seamless, makes your client happy on a continuous basis, makes the stuff that you've designed look fantastic always because there's a, an element of control that you were able to to integrate into the project so it's, it's it's not just about making money on absolutely everything yourself but it's these collaborations i think in my mind are really really important to um you know to create lasting impact of that of that design project and it's you know, if you watch a football game where all you have is the quarterback, you know, throwing the football to a guy who runs down the field, there's nobody else there. That's going to be pretty boring, you know. But when you bring all the other team components into it, then there's a, some excitement. You're still going to have the quarterback throwing the ball down the field, but there's so many other things that are going on that are part and parcel of it that really add to that experience. And I think that's, you know, that's probably the best analogy that I can give you guys. That's a great analogy. It's a great analogy. And, you know, from the from the word girl over here, there were a couple of things that you guys had mentioned early on in the conversation prior to today and then as well as today. And I think, you know, what what's resonating with me as far as is the elements of your success is being versatile and being flexible with each other, with with your individual um, layers and levels of the work that you do, but then also being very understanding of the other players on the field thing with with, with your analogy, you know, <laughs> it, under, understanding that there are other players on the field and, and that their position and their role is is important and giving yeah. them the space to, 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 to make the plays, right? And to not yeah. always just be the guy running it, running it into the end zone. 
it's all of the players. It's, you know, the sum of all of those parts that, that, that make these projects really come to life. And, and I think that that you guys have done such a brilliant job of, of explaining and illustrating that today. And I appreciate you so, so much for doing that. You definitely touched on some points that, that have been hot topics here in the group. And we will, we will revisit that, um, at, at a later time. So, um, for, for those of you watching and listening in, stay tuned for, for more on on that later um we're we're at the top of the hour so we're going to wind this one down everyone thank you sharon so much for joining rick for joining us.